meant to introduce our instructors. Hopefully you have seen some information about them already in the stuff that was posted. Uh, we've got Dave King, he works at Rackspace, and uh, he has a great history in software development and a lot of experience, and um, we'll be able to share all his background in teaching and learning software development uh, with you guys. Cody Short is a student at Virginia Tech currently and hoping to have a, a major in software development as well as in business, also interested in the entrepreneurial aspects of that industry. So, all right, with that, Cody and Dave. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thanks, Melissa. Um, okay, cool. Uh, well, uh, we're getting uh, some people still set up with their power. We'll uh, kind of go ahead and get started. Um, so, welcome to the course. Uh, basic idea behind the course was. Um, I think that there's a lot of times where you think you need a technical person and the thing that I hope that we can give you out of this course is the idea that, hey, maybe I can do some of this myself. Um, I, as a technical person, it's wonderful when we get to charge a verbally uh, high contracting fee per hour um, to build very easy things. Um, Bootstrap is one of those technologies that's really, really easy. And uh, I hope that uh, today we can, we can show you that, maybe even if you don't have a, a kind of a, a formal software development background. Um, so uh, we're, we're here to kind of guide you through that. Um, kind of want to show you what we'll be doing tonight. Uh, I'll be talking a little bit about like, like Bootstrap, what is Bootstrap, why would you use Bootstrap. Um, Bootstrap has kind of one big concept that's important to know if you don't know anything, like it's talking about like going back to school and like sitting down and learning like math, like the concept of calculus, the concept of differentiation, like these are concepts, right? Bootstrap really only has one concept that you have to learn, and it's the grid system. So we're talking about the grid system and all the things that are involved with the uh, why Bootstrap is so great and the grid system is kind of a big thing. Um, and then we'll go through bootstrap components. Bootstrap components are not concepts, they're more like things. You can think of uh, bootstrap as like a framework um, and the components as Legos. So you connect the Legos and the grid system is what lets you interlock the components together. Um, what I really want out of this class is for like people to be working at their desk, working with people next to them. We have a few helpers. We have, uh, uh, I'll be standing up during, uh, like, essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk here, and then we're going to say, okay, it's exercise time. Then we're going to go to the exercise time at people's individual computers, um, help you out, kind of let you see the things that I'm doing up on the screen, um, and then we'll go back and say, okay, well, we spend maybe five, ten minutes on that time to talk about the next thing. Um, and then at the end, essentially, we want to have whatever time is left to essentially give you guys free reign to build what you want to build. Um, we're going to see how this goes. Um, basically, just kind of give you some time to, to take and generate things that you may have seen us talk about. And again, we'll have uh, help here in the back and roaming around to, to help you do that. Um, I think we're going to see how that works given the space that we have. But um, I think it's really important as part of today that everyone is at their computer or at, a, at someone next to them at their computer and is doing things kind of themselves and not just watching me do this. Um, and uh, demos, I think uh, I think we can probably, uh, based on the lab time, kind of show people what you've done for that lab time. Um, this is all ambitious that based on how much time we actually have at the end. But I, I think it would be everything kind of we pull it off. I think it's going to be a great time. Um, thanks for all coming out. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, everyone seems to be excited to learn. So, cool. Um, so, uh, Bootstrap, the technology. Essentially, this is uh, uh, the it's a framework essentially that makes building websites really easy. So, uh, it uses some uh, the term responsive. I'll be talking a little bit about what responsive layout means. Responsive layout basically means you build one website for your mobile, for your desktop, for your tablet and you build that one website. You don't have to build mobile only websites, you don't have to build desktop only websites. You build one website and it uh, adjusts based on how big the screen is. So there's a website, at bootstrap.com. Um, gotta be honest, a lot of the stuff that we're gonna be doing today comes from the website. Like this is, Bootstrap is not a very, uh, like there's a lot of uh, resources out there to learn Bootstrap and their website is really good. And so like there's a zip file that some of you may have seen on the Facebook page um, essentially, it's got a bunch of stuff from that website uh, to help you learn. So, um, Bootstrap is not like a super, um, I, I definitely appreciate the difficulty if you're not technical, but um, Bootstrap is not like their dark, deep corners of Bootstrap. It's, a, it's meant to be very egalitarian. It's meant to kind of help you learn, um, and there's a lot of resources out there. Um, this, is, I hope, is your, the start of your journey. Um, I hope it's not the end. Um, 
Um, so I talked a little bit about this, uh, but uh, back in the dark days of HTML and web development, you have a designer, and the designer would be the one that knew everything about how to make a good looking website. And the designer would uh, hack everything together, and then they would be the only one that could update the website, and so you'd have to pay the designer a lot of money per hour. Um, and so Bootstrap is this notion that maybe, hey, it should be easier. Um, and uh, it was originally a Twitter. If you look throughout kind of the uh, resources that are available online, some people will call it Twitter Bootstrap. Um, both, of the, both of the original developers behind Bootstrap are no longer at Twitter, and Bootstrap is open source. Like, it's free to everyone. Um, it's got a very, uh, if you're into open source software, it has a very permissive license. Like, Bootstrap's not something where you pay money. It's all just kind of, it's open source, it's free. Um, Twitter was the originators. It was originally in-house, but now it's kind of everywhere. Um, another kind of bit, uh, if you're looking around online, there's Bootstrap 2 and there's Bootstrap 3. We're going to talk about Bootstrap 3. Bootstrap 2 was kind of, it was a little weirder in terms of how it dealt with uh, responsive layouts. And Bootstrap 3 is the newest, and so we're talking about the newest. Um, so, um, I put these on the Facebook page. How many people have downloaded the material already? Okay, who has not downloaded the material? Okay, who of the people who have not downloaded the material does not have BT Wireless? Okay. I'm trying to get it. BT Wireless. I have a password and a username, but. Okay, so who's having, uh, so Cynthia's got the jump drive. Yes. She'll be moving around. Oh, good. So, um, Essentially, what I, I'm going I'm to start essentially the course as I as I start kind of the examples. Cynthia is going to be going around individually to your desk to help you get set up. Um, there are exercises that we'll be going to kind of individually, and essentially when it's time for the exercises, it's going to be like there's going to be a thing on the, the slide is going to say exercises, and it's going to say which exercise. So there's not going to be exercises on the thing. It's going to be on your computer. Um, so we have the jump drive. Hopefully, the jump drive is compatible with your computers. Um, if you, you can also download it from the internet. Um, uh, I'm gonna have to keep going, but uh, you can talk to people nearby you to get your links. And if, again, if you are still having problems with your internet, hold your hand up and Cynthia will get to you. Um, okay? Yeah, sure. One more time, if people could raise their hands so I can kind of be aware of where we're to. Okay, thank you. Sweet, thanks so much guys. Um, so I know that there are going to be a lot of people here who maybe have never done anything with websites. Um, I am not going to pretend that you're going to come away from this class knowing everything in the world about websites. Um, I think that probably the best audience for this class is someone who has maybe done a little bit with HTML, doesn't really know it too deeply, kind of wants to accelerate their learning. Um, so again, with the knowledge that I'm not going to turn you from HTML complete not novice to expert, um, I'm just going to kind of go over these words that I've been saying. Um, you have a web page. The web page is made of two kind of big things. This is a simplification, but there are two kind of big things that make up a web page. One is HTML. HTML is a document that has the contents of the page. And uh, then you have CSS, which styles the page. So CSS says this is red, and HTML says the text that's on the, on the page. So two things here. Um, Really, this course is not about CSS, even though we use a lot of CSS. So it's not about styling, but it's kind of about using the bootstrap styling. Um, the bootstrap method is essentially that you write your document using the correct bootstrap way, and it styles itself accordingly. Now, advanced topic is overriding the bootstrap styles. I'm not going to talk about that today. Um, Cody's going to get up here and talk at some, uh, near the end of the, like, after we've gone through the examples about like what he's had to do to actually, like, build a real uh, website with Bootstrap, and some of it does involve a lot of custom CSS. So I don't want to pretend that you're going to, like, it, it, there's, there's still a lot to learn after this course, is kind of the, the takeaway. Um, but I don't want to diminish the, the challenge here, and that's why we have kind of lab helpers. Um, I don't, like, this is, this is hard stuff, and you can spend years of your life on it, and I have So, um, but we're here to help. Cool. Um, so the big thing I want you to get away from this, the, 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 uh, I, I, want, I want you to get a lot of stuff away from this class, but uh, Bootstrap is pretty easy, and the easiest way to see how it is done is to look at the source that makes a web page. Um, if you don't know about this, um, if you're on a web page and you want to see how is that web page made, made, you click on View Source, 
view source. Um, so I wasn't able to confirm with this with Safari, so someone's gonna have to tell me whether or not that's correct in Safari. I Googled this, I couldn't get someone to confirm this before class, sorry. Um, control U is the shortcut for most everything, and I'll be using that during the course to show you kind of the connection between the web page and the source that makes up the web page. Is that the same on Macs? Well, I've got it on Safari, it claims command option U. So okay. I think it wouldn't be control U, it'd probably be Apple U. Gotcha. Um, that would be my guess if you're on a Mac. Um, if someone could tell me that's wrong immediately, that would be helpful. Otherwise, okay, cool, we're gonna assume that that's right. Um, good stuff. So again, websites, made of HTML, CSS. We're gonna look behind the source of the website by pressing control U in a lot of cases, just to see, what's, see what makes a tick. Um, so this is a little kind of, uh, a meta thing, you can use this or not, it doesn't really matter. Um, I also provided a number of dummy uh, images and dummy texts. Um, when you're making a website, maybe you don't have the content ready, and so you have to fill it up with dummy stuff. Dummy images, dummy text, um, it, you don't want to make the whole website, you just kind of want to make sure the website looks good. And there are a number of things for that. Um, the canonical designer one is this text called warm ipsum, which is actually like corrupted Latin. Um, it just is a bunch of stuff you paste onto the page and you make sure that your the text is in the right place, like relative to everything else. Um, with images, there are a number of placeholder image sites. Um, I use a lot of, uh, my favorite is place kitten. Sometimes they go down though, so these are cute kittens that show up and fill up your page. So there's also dogs, place dog, place dog very good. And then if you're very boring, you can do placehold.it, which will just have a box and it will say how big the box is. So this is how you fill up your sites. You're doing the styling of the site. You're not necessarily doing all of the content that goes into the site. Um, anyway. Um, so Bootstrap 101, um, I did a number of, okay, let's, uh, let's go back. Okay. So this is kind of the first time I'm going over to a, one of these pages. So um, this is, Bootstrap kind of provides you with styles that make things look good by default. And like I talked about before, we're gonna go view source, control U. Um, I'm gonna make this bigger. Um, so we've got the source here, we've got the original page, so header one, header two, header three, header four. These are HTML header elements and they are generated by header one, header two, header three, and header four. Um, so these are, well, so HTML has a whole bunch of tags just like this. There are a lot of them. Uh, if you hear people talk about HTML5, HTML5 adds even more of them. Um, uh, we're not gonna go through all of the different HTML tags in the universe in this class, I'm sorry. Um, the Bootstrap makes a lot of the most common ones easy. Um, so that's the, like, that's the reality of the 30 second introduction to HTML. Um, so, okay. Um, the one thing, kind of bootstrap, the first bootstrap-ism that I'm gonna throw at you is this concept of a container. In bootstrap, you wanna put most of your stuff inside containers, there are exceptions to this. Um, I'll mention some of them later, but for now, you kind of wanna think, I've got content, it should go into a container. Well, why should it go into a container? Well, if we go down, I think I put it on this page. Um, but this should be in, if you're following along with the slides, if you've got the zip file, hopefully this is in slides, bootstrap zero. Um, and this is the container, so containers. If you don't have a container, so this is what your text looks like. So you'll notice that the text is right on the very edge of your browser. And if you, uh, I don't know if you can resize that one, you have to resize this one. But if you resize it, it doesn't really help you too much. So you're, you, have a you don't have a container here, and we can look at the source. So this, it's not immediately obvious from the from looking at the source, but this is not inside of a container. This is just text, and I talked about kind of dummy text before. Um, not inside of a container, and you'll see that it ends up looking like this. That's bad. You don't want that. Um, Bootstrap has two kinds of containers. Honestly, you'll probably use the first one more than the second one, but there are times when the second one is also useful. 
Um, the container is a fixed width and it expands or contracts based on screen size. Now this is going to be like, I don't want you, like, if you have a cl close eye, you can see this. Um, you may not see this when I, it's on my screen, but the way you can also go in the zip file, open up Bootstrap Zero and resize on your own machine. Um, but if you'll notice, okay, here we've got, this is inside of a container. So proof inside of a container, div class container. Um, and a div is just, it's just an element. There's nothing semantic about a div. It's just, it's a container in some sense. It's a, a different kind of container, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so we've got, this is inside a container. It's a fixed width based on the screen size and you can resize it and you'll notice that it continues to have that nice padding. It doesn't run up against the side of the browser. So, sorry, I think I'm redoing this a lot, trying to just, Excuse me. yeah. Can you ask questions? Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, one is responsive and one isn't. The container, the fixed width is uh, non-responsive and the uh, other one is responsive. So everything is responsive within Bootstrap. Um, oh. Responsive has a specific meaning, like they, everything will adapt based on the size of the screen. So the when you say fixed width, yeah, the, also yeah, the fixed width means that kind of if you're on a different viewport size, if you're on, so uh, I'll talk about this when we get to the grid system. Um, there are four viewport widths that matter, or four classes of viewport width that matter in Bootstrap. Um, and within each one, it has a fixed size. Okay. So, oh, right. Okay. So if you're on a, if you're on mobile, it's always going to be the same, et cetera. Um, that's a very good question. Um, <laughs> So we also have fluid containers, and I actually feel like with that fluid container, I'm going to double check, but I actually it's a fluid container. Um, it's not obvious from there that it is actually different than the uh, no container. But a fluid container is a container that has the um, container-fluid. It uh, will expand to fill the width of the screen. Um, you will really never want to do this for text but you will often want to do this for other things, and we'll talk about nav bars later. Nav bars are an example where you want to use a fluid width container. Um, so pretty much, if you're doing text, you want just a normal container. Um, and then it's just, Bootstrap makes block quotes look nice, for example, and it's got this nice gray thing and, and so forth. Um, yeah. Are those container classes predefined in Bootstrap? They're, they're, they're in Bootstrap. So uh, one thing uh, to so I didn't I didn't talk about this specifically. Um, we've got the head of your HTML document. You've got a link, and essentially everything that's on this page is being included from uh, like it's Bootstrap main.css. And actually, if you want to be super super awesome and happy, uh, you can open this up at, and look inside. So this is just this is garbage, right? You you're not going to see that, but if you know HTML, you can say, okay, hey, here's, here's all the container styles. So this is, that's, that's how you know. Um, sometimes when I'm looking at like the, when I was putting this talk together, I was looking at like the Bootstrap demo pages, and you're like, okay, where's that actually defined? Like, it's got a class, you're like, is that part of Bootstrap or not? You could go through all the Bootstrap docs. What I ended up doing was doing what I exact, just did right here, open up the file, sorry. Question? Yeah? Uh, you want to insert Bootstrap into our web page, you need to include the CSS and JavaScript, or JavaScript is just for yeah, um, pretty much every, so uh, there are kind of two halves of the, what, the class tonight would be, like the grid system is all in CSS, so mm -hmm. grid system, viewport widths, all CSS, stuff like modals, tabs, you need to have JavaScript on, included, whether or not you actually are writing in JavaScript. So right. things like tabs will work okay. with, that's not CSS, only. you have to have yeah, JavaScript. Yeah, yeah. so, also, like, yeah. Uh, Yeah, for, is that specifically about JavaScript? Or <coughs> uh, JavaScript. Yeah, okay. For JavaScript, there are no conflict modes for, so I'm going to get like, go off the, <laughs> not everyone has to understand what I'm saying right here. Um, there are no conflict modes for Bootstrap. Um, I, if you go into the Bootstrap JavaScript tutorial, it'll tell you how to activate that. But yes, I mean, you obviously have to be concerned about that anytime you're including jQuery on the page if you've got other things that use dollar something, right? Like, yes. Cool. Um, 
The one thing that I didn't call out in the slides, but uh, is actually kind of hard to see here, but I'll, uh, I'm gonna hack the HTML on my screen to help you guys see that, um, is that Bootstrap has like some helper classes for images, and actually, ah, okay, yeah. So I zoomed in like crazy. Um, so what we're gonna do is, we have these four images defined, and it's, also, it's the same dog each time, so it's an image, it's an image that has it's a it's an image that has an image circle class, image rounding class, image thumbnail class. Now, what I'm going to do is don't ever do this. Uh, <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm doing is very you, you shouldn't really define styles on elements. Anyway, so this is the difference between the, the four different types, right? So the first one is the just the, the dog. It's just an image class. It's 200 by 200 dog. The second one is the circle dog. It has a circle around it. The third one is the rounded dog. It has rounded corners, and then the fourth one is a thumbnail. And even with a back, black background, it's hard to tell from the projector. But if you're opening this locally, it's got like a border that looks kind of nice. So you would add an image thumbnail class if you were displaying some images and you wanted to kind of make them look better than no border and no border images in the file. So these are things that kind of help you out. Um, and there's a demo page, and uh, also in the zip file, it'll, it'll have kind of four examples. Um, so I think kind of with, like with that, the, uh, the next thing in the so containers, uh, I told I showed you that. So the first example, like so, we've, we've had some questions. What I, I really want to kind of get to is the, the part that I promised, essentially, where people are like looking at their desks um, uh, and trying to work through a few just basic HTML things, kind of see where people are. Um, there's a getting started exercise. Um, I think there are three like really basic ones. One is where I think one of those is to put an image on the screen. So basically, this is just kind of a sanity check. How are your computers doing? Are you able to kind of develop? It's important because we'll be starting to talk about the grid system. Grid system is a little more complicated. Um, and uh, I want to make sure everyone kind of has a working computer. Um, if it turns out we just kind of open the exercises, everyone's like, okay, it's boring. We'll just kind of move on. So I think basically five minutes to kind of look at your desks, figure this out. I'm going to open up the, uh, I'm actually going to open up the exercise on my computer here um, so that you, uh, so we have something. There's an exercises directory, and inside that exercises directory within the zip file is the getting started exercises. And okay, so essentially the idea is that you open up this in your favorite text editor, um, you modify this, and you open it in your browser, and you see the solution below the uh, below the question. Okay, with that said, I'm gonna stand up and start moving around. Sweet. Thanks for doing this. Uh, I, I, I know if you know HTML, this has probably been the most boring uh, five minutes of your time, but uh, I just want to make sure everyone's kind of at the point where they can make changes, see it on their browser. That's kind of the most important thing as we go forward because we're going to be doing some more changes and seeing it on the browser and learning all about kind of all the great things that Bootstrap provides us for grid. Um, so like I said before, Bootstrap has one concept. It's the grid system. Um, grids are super useful. I, I don't want to like... Like I think that of the things we'll be talking today, the grids are probably the hardest, but grids are like very, very useful when you're actually doing web pages. Um, one thing about HTML and CSS is that they don't really let you put things where you want them to go, and the grid system is pretty much gives you the way to do that. So um, there are links here. Um, I'm gonna talk to you about the grid system, and I'm gonna go through slides, and my uh, assumption for my I have made the slides in such a way that I feel like you can get everything from just the slides, but if you're not getting something from just the slides, there are these links here, and I tried to do that throughout the slides. These are links to the Bootstrap documentation, not only to the documentation about what the, what the grid is, but to some examples. And again, the tool we'll use for all of this is ViewSource. So ViewSource will show you what these things actually look like, and it's the, it's the, magic, the, the, the magic of uh, Bootstrap. So I talked about containers. Um, containers, the grid system, rows exist within containers. So we have div class container in the in the code. You saw that in the exercises. Um, rows are div class row. So okay. Um, so containers have rows. Okay, sure, got it. Um, rows also contain columns. Uh, bad news: columns are more complicated. Um, there are a lot of different types of columns, and they are all customized per the viewport width. So I've said viewport a few times, and I'll be explaining what I actually mean by that. Um, the columns have, there are more different types of columns. So um, I think that there are probably, let's see, there are 12, uh, 
It's a grid system. Each column, like a row has 12 columns in it. So you can have columns that are of width 6. And what that means is that it's 6 bootstrap columns. It doesn't mean that it's 6 pixels. It doesn't mean that it's 600 pixels. It doesn't mean that it's 6,000 pixels. It just means that it's 6 bootstrap columns. So a row always has 12 bootstrap columns. Um, you can actually have rows inside rows. And the nested row has 12 bootstrap columns, whether or not it's inside of a another <laughs> column of width 3. Anyway, so that's crazy, but we'll talk a little bit about that in just the example thing. So that will hopefully seem less crazy. Um, so again, grid system, got the containers, rows inside containers, columns inside rows. And we'll see all the different types of columns we have. Um, so I talked about this before, uh, but I just kind of want to, like, we're going to get into some concepts in the grid system, and you're probably going to wonder why. And the answer to why is responsive web design. Responsive web design means that you build one website, it displays, uh, you don't have, you don't build a mobile website, you don't build a desktop website, you build one website, and the page responds to the width of the website. Um, so the big concept is a viewport width. Viewport basically just means you're looking at the web page. <coughs> the thing that's looking at the web page is the viewport. So it's just this terminology they use um, to confuse you, but it really just means the width. Is that just like a virtual construct, or is it, are there actual physical examples of that, like a browser window? or? A... I think it comes from, uh, I'm not an expert in the world of physical optics, but right. I think it is a it is a actual like engineering concept that has been applied to bootstrap. What would it mean? Is, is, so viewport, uh -huh. is that a virtual concept, or would device you're using dictate what the viewport is? The device, well, so that, that's okay. that's the that's in fact the next uh, oh, slide. Sorry, so no you're you're I'm, I'm, that's that's exactly okay. what I want. You, okay. If I'm doing my slides right, you always are asking what's on the next slide. Um, so uh, in practice, mobile and tablet are fixed width viewports. So your mobile and your tablet are always going to be the same. Um, I've got my Android, Samsung Galaxy S3. Um, this thing is always going to have the 768 pixel width. So never going to change. I've got my tablet, I've got my uh, what is it, Nexus 7, um, it's always going to have it, it's wider than my mobile, but it's not uh, that wide. And then we have our desktop, and that's essentially the uh, what I've been showing to you kind of throughout the night. Um, we've got our desktop, and it's it actually, it can have whatever it wants, right? So this thing is like the one flexible viewport in the world, and you'll actually, uh, so these aren't, this isn't a grid, so I'm not going to use that as an example, but um, your desktop can simulate a mobile uh, if it is less than 768 pixels. Um, it will simulate a tablet if it is less than 992 pixels. It will simulate a large desktop, which is or a desktop if it is less than 1,200 pixels, and otherwise, uh, it will be a large desktop. So, um, the one thing, the caveat is that I'm zooming in to make sure you guys can see the projector. So the pixels are not going to be accurate on the, my machine. They will be accurate on your machine. And you can, you, you'll be able to see as we go into the, the world of the grid system, as you make it smaller, if you make it smaller than 768 pixels, you're going to start to see all of the extra small uh, categories apply. Okay. So the last thing that's here, I talked about the category, I talked about the size, the abbreviation. This is bootstrap ease. We're going to see a lot. So I talked about, like, oh, you got div container. Eh, it's just containers. you got div row. It's just a row. Then you have all the columns. And the columns come with two identifiers. It's got the call. It's got the number of columns it is. C-O-L. Yeah, C-O-L dash the number. So, like, set, like, so I'm going to say I want a uh, column of three. I want three bootstrap columns that display on mobile. And... So that, that's the class, and so that ends up in Bootstrap E's being call dash three dash xs, and that's the abbreviation. Was it the uh, in the middle uh, the MD there? Was that uh, yeah? You might be right, actually. I am sorry. Please uh, erase what I just said from your brain. Uh, it is call dash viewport size dash number of width. Uh, MD is mobile device. Was that MD is mobile device? No, MD oh. is media or medium, and it's for okay. desktop. Yeah, okay. so confusing, right? That's because the width of the it's the width that determines it. It's okay. not the it's not the detects you're on mobile. It just it's the width of your browser that determines which one shows up. Um, 
We're going to see some examples later about what it means for a column to, like if you're on a, if you can find a large style and you're on a, a mobile, what happens? <laughs> like, like you're, or if you're on a, sorry, I, I just broke my rule. Um, if you, you define an, X, uh, an LG style and you're on an XS viewport, what happens? Like, it'll show up, it just, it'll stack, everything stacks. Um, yeah. Yeah, they're, uh, um, if you were on the Facebook page, they're, they're available there. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I guess I didn't get it. So it's fine. Um, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Cynthia can help me. Um, she has the jump drive. Okay. Well, I have the jump drive from her. It's in yeah. that file from the Facebook app. The slides. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Sweet. So we have the slides figured out. Um, so, big concept here, viewports. Viewports have different widths based on which width you're in. Different styles apply. Okay. This is one of the things that it looks like. Um, it's a, like I said, you've got the container, you've got the rows, and then you have columns inside of it. Um, div class equals call-md-6, six, six columns. Now, the thing that kind of we remember, bootstrap grid, 12 columns. That's the big thing. 12 columns. Every time you have a row, 12 columns. <laughs> so, um, I don't think this is, like this is, uh, uh, I keep repeating it because it's kind of the one thing you have to know about bootstrap. So if I want, if I, I want you to take one thing away from the uh, course uh, that's not the philosophical, you can do it yourself. I, I think the bootstrap grid system would be a wonderful thing to take away from this course. Um, call MD6, so six columns. Um, and uh, so I've got all sorts of stuff on the slides about like just HTML, but let's take it to the browser. Um, and let's see what actually happens when we get into these situations where we start resizing. So the first thing right up there, basic grid, so six columns, six columns, that matches what was on the slides. I'm going to go and do our, okay, that was interesting. Um, when you say yeah. six columns, do you mean that contain that that element is six columns wide, or it has six columns. In it, it has six columns. It's six columns wide. Okay. So, so it's a, it's a column is a unit of measurement. In yes. This. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. Um, so if you see here, this is the exact thing that I was showing you on the slides. So MD six six columns, um, and okay, we're going to see what happens. What I'm first going to do is just to show you. So. I want to zoom in because I think that we can see better. But I want to show you that this actually, like, when I say that MD is 992, then, like, that I'm actually telling the truth. So this is, this is the most dangerous part of my talk because uh, <laughs> you're going to actually hold me accountable. Um, so I've opened up, what I've done here is I've opened up uh, developer mode, which will, the handy thing about developer mode is, I, you don't have to do this at your desk. I just want to show you that I'm doing this and I'm being honest. Uh, you'll notice that. If you look at the top right of the browser after I um, yep, yep, it's gonna. So notice that I'm resizing it down so that's 1295 pixels. Okay, everyone see that? Top right. Yep. Okay, cool. Notice the six columns. So six columns. I claimed before that. Okay, so we've defined MD. MD. These are six MD columns, and I said that MD shows up with 992. So the way the Bootstrap grid system works is if it is if you define a style for a bigger viewport that you're on, then it will stack the columns. So you will not have six columns next to six columns. You will have six columns and six columns underneath it. So they wrap. They wrap. Okay. Yeah. But they don't like. So if you've got a row here and you've got a row here, it just wraps within the row. It doesn't. This other row isn't even involved. You're not. You're not part of the equation. Yeah. Um, so we have um, the the size. Extra, I'm assuming uh -huh. extra small, small, medium, large. Yeah. Um, so is it that when the viewport is a certain size, mm -hmm. it it activates all the elements with those size names like MD or? Yeah, basically, it's, technically it's CSS media queries, which basically responds based upon the screen width. Okay, right. And then it'll activate that certain class. So, but but a, so but a bunch of stuff you've defined in your code where you're like, oh, this is going to be MD dash mm -hmm. whatever. That suddenly gets that that's sort of suddenly important because MD is the the, the query the media query size. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, the way that I think about it is that uh, you define what you want to be side by side, and if it's less than that, it stacks. Okay. So that's how I go into it. 
And you um, said, and you said a great question, stuff Thank wraps uh -huh. within a container? It stuff wraps within a row. Within a row. Right. Okay. So a container can have many rows. So if you had a bunch right. of columns, okay, so you right. had a bunch of columns in the row. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, yep. Okay. Great questions. Thank you. Um, cool. So we're holding me honest. I've gone to 100% zoom, so the pixels will be perfect. And we claim, we've defined these two, these two columns. One says it's 6MD, the other says it's 6MD. I have claimed that when it gets less than 992 pixels, that they will stack. So this is where you, you either trust me or you lose all faith in me. Um, I certainly hope that this works. <laughs> it should work. <laughs> um, so 11, 10, 96, 10, 11, 10, 11. Oh, oh, it stacks. 9, uh, 973. So let's try it again. Okay, 9. There you go. 992. Did not stack. And let's. Yeah, 99 stack. So Bootstrap, it, it, I trusted Bootstrap, and Bootstrap gave back um, the. The thing that's interesting here is we can change that, right? And uh, let me let me do that. Uh, okay, exercise my one of slides. Bootstrap one .html. Um, So we could make this uh, XS. I mean, this would this would be fine as XS, right? And then I can reload and XS. Now it's now it's stacked. <coughs> now what did we say about XS? We said XS was well, it said 768 pixels. So it doesn't actually have a rule when it's going to stack. It will stack because it will not let you prevent do something that looks ugly. I bet. Oh, it does not actually stack. Yeah. That is impressive. Yeah. Really, really Bootstrap knows what's up. <laughs> it's going to try its best to put these things next to each other because I've told it to put them next to each other on pretty much every viewport I could possibly think of. Can I ask, what's the yeah. difference between that uh, grid system here mm -hmm. and something like WordPress or mm -hmm. other um, responsive, no, responsive WordPress or other... Uh, yeah, interesting. Um, so I'm going to admit ignorance. Um, responsive WordPress is using something. I don't know what it's using. Uh, so generally, it's what the person's coded. So like mm -hmm. certain companies actually done all these media queries themselves. I see. So it's the same technology. The beauty of Bootstrap mm -hmm. is it allows you to control that yourself. So you have the knowledge to build that oh, website right. by yourself. So yeah. yeah. Like someone else's subject to there. Yeah, that's a, that's yeah. a really good point. Like, so Bootstrap is just using features in the browser, and so other people have built responsive websites using those same features in the browser. Bootstrap's free. So, well, yeah. Okay. Well, so we love Bootstrap. Bootstrap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Does the width of the of column is a unit of width in, yes. the, in, uh, in, in, in Bootstrap? Does that width change, or is it like, is it in pixels, EMs? Um, characters. It is based on the size of the viewport. Sorry, I'm just going back to this. It's based on the size of the viewport. Okay. Um, you can see. Uh, I think. I think it does change. Okay. So what will happen is, MD is a good example because there's uh, SM and XS. So we'll, 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 right now we're in an XS environment, and in the XS environment, so that this is developer tools. So again, I don't. I don't need you to know everything about developer tools, mm -hmm. but uh, okay. Well, this is gonna. I'm gonna claim this is 318 pixels because <laughs> I can read it up there. Um, okay. It's okay if you you don't uh, you you don't, you don't. It's not a big deal. Um, what's happening? So on XS, you basically don't have any choice. It's gonna basically fill to the size of the container, and so let's get it a little bigger and get it to onto an SM. SM we said was over 798 pixels, so we're gonna go into 800. Okay, there we go. So we're in SM land right now, and in SM, okay, there we go. In X, SM land, this looks like it's 750 pixels, and it's so. If I expand this a little bit, it's gonna stay 750 pixels. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yes, it has. So uh, what is it? The column. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh -huh. the column, the column is the blue part, and then the it's, it's kind of blue. <laughs> the okay, kind so of green is the pattern. Now, yeah, is it that uh -huh. the, the the actual width of a column mm -hmm. in whatever pixels changes mm -hmm. when you're in a different size viewport, mm -hmm. x uh, uh, medium, extra small, whatever? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's, that's accurate. It that's does a media query, uh -huh. figures out yep. how wide the viewport yep. is. It looks at and then it decides uh -huh. which the sizes it's in. Yep. And it says, based on that size, I will now make yep. a column. Absolutely. Certain, okay. Completely correct. Great and, question. And is it the same whether it's in like an Android or an uh, yep. iPhone, yep. regardless of the handset or 
I, hardware. The, the answer is probably yes. I will find yes. Nine percent of the time. I'm not like there, someone could have written a crazy mobile browser that doesn't stand yeah. fine. But yeah, Android browser is supposed to. Client, <laughs> client, 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 client. So it all should right. just boil down to right. pixels. Right. All right. So you have right. it at the viewport, it's got a certain number of pixels, and it says yep. based on that, what size are we in? Medium, yep. small, extra small. Right. Yep. Really, really great points. So yeah. is it like until it doesn't get space to make six columns, it doesn't make six, it makes only one? Um, and the other yes. wrap. Yeah. Yes. It, essentially, so it would make either one or six. That's it. Oh, good question. Yeah. But this, why is it not making like three, four columns here and then wrapping the remaining columns when there's sufficient width there? Well, you told, well, so uh, not, to, not to be too basic, I'm, so I'm going to answer this and you can kind of come back to me. Mm -hmm. um, is that we told it to be six columns. So we said, hey, this is a six column element. Mm -hmm. So we didn't say that, hey, there's a three column element that possibly could exist here. Mm -hmm. We could do that. We can do this. In which case, we're making three columns in there. Right. So we now have said, hey, there are two things. And mm -hmm. what we can do here, um, so based on this, uh, what I'm project. suggesting is going to happen is that you're going to have, you're going to, you're going to be resizing it smaller and smaller. You're going to have three, three, and then six underneath. So okay. three will be next to each other and six underneath. Okay. Does, that, does that match your when it's when it's when it's room for six columns? Yeah. And when there's room for four columns, right. it'll be three, three, and six. No. It'll happen to the six. I guess it'll just be out of the push page. It down. Yeah. It'll push it down. It'll push it'll it down. If there's room for four, it'll be three, three, six. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And the six, you won't be able to see all of it because it's bigger than the viewport. It's um, wider than the viewport. The. I mean, we don't actually have content there. I guess. Right. But right. If right. We did. Well, we, we, we can do that. <laughs> okay. uh, sorry, uh, does that, uh, based on what we said, does, so does that... I have one more yeah, yeah. So like, uh, when you are expanding, suppose earlier there was width for only one column, if mm -hmm. you keep on expanding and you had specified six columns, so would it expand in a way like it will make one, two, three, four, five, and then whatever is remaining it goes on the next, or is it like it will only make six, otherwise it will make one column which is doing now? Uh, what would happen? Right now, it's making only one column, right? Yeah. Well, so we haven't told it any uh, anything that exists that's one column, so it's never going to break up a column that we said well, like a, a unit. So this is I have not helped you in the sense that I've said, hey, the text here is three columns, right? But like it's not going to break up anything that you've told you've told you said is a a column essentially. So even though I may be misinterpreting your question, um, let me know if so. Um, but even though there may be room for one column. There's no one column that can possibly float down. Does that does that make sense? We can talk. We can talk yeah, about we can this talk individually. Yeah. Um, but these are, these are great questions, guys. Okay. Um, you feel bad if you just take a picture of the pizza. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so uh, there's a bunch of bunch of other stuff. Uh, oh, not, uh, that was the wrong uh, time to say my. Yeah. Go ahead. So let's say I specify the size as large, uh -huh. and I specify twelve columns, and then I wouldn't be that set on my cell phone. Uh huh. All right, so there's not enough room for both columns. Uh -huh. So what's going to happen? Is it going to have like it's going to wrap all the text, or is it going to? So it will stack in that situation. So we can we can do that exactly that you that you talked about. Mm -hmm. So like we we now we said, hey, these are the these are large, right? So what we're going to do is then we're going to go all the way down to a small, to our mobile, right? And our mobile, I think we said was 700, and yeah, so that's mobile. Yeah, okay, cool. Sure. So you'll notice that they're all stacked. So even though we said on a large. They should be side by side. You're on your mobile, they're stacked. So, what you can do here also is because, um, so we said large or small hundred pixels and above. So, what will happen here is that we go all the way up to, okay, so we're at 1268 there. Notice they're stacked, they're, they're next to each other. But if we go down a little bit, it's going to go, uh, okay, did I get the numbers wrong? Um, interesting. Okay, so that seems to be breaking at uh, that is because let's bring it. Okay, I don't know exactly what's happening. It looks like it is stacking at. Uh, oh no no that, yeah right sorry sorry never mind I, I got the I got the trick one. The uh, the the slides are wrong. Okay, this should be less than this should be less than. I think this is okay. That, that's what's happening. No, uh -huh. it's that's quite large and just one large column. Like okay. 12, yeah. Uh, like 12 bottoms and then make the screen really small. So uh, we're going to see how to do this in a second. But I'm going to. We want stuff that 
fills the image. Yes. It fills it, and the one way to do that is to give an image class image responsive. You'll see this on some of the demos uh, in the zip file. Um, so this will fill the page, essentially. Um, I don't know if it's going to actually fill it with the picture, because the picture, well, let's see. Okay, so, okay. Um, so what happens is he's actually, he actually is filling the, the page, it's just not that big. So like, there's just a bunch of other stuff. So I think we can do, uh, what do I do? Right here. I trust the internet. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so what's happening here, okay, so we're, we've got a really big image here. Okay, we've got a Shelby. Okay, he's cool. Um, we're going to make it small, and it's a responsive image, so we actually resize this. So this is, we're, we, we've skipped ahead. I want to talk about responsive images. Responsive images will fill up a column, essentially. So when you do it, you give the image to class, image dash responsive. Um, and as we shrink it, so we're, we're shrinking down from a large, um, and the reason we use an image here is just to show you this is content that fills the fills it. It, it doesn't like stays proportional yeah, yeah. all the time. I could also do war mix them, I suppose, but you know, puppies are cuter. Um, so keeps getting smaller, keeps getting smaller. So he doesn't there isn't a situation where <coughs> the image is bigger. Bootstrap's okay. like, okay, we see this situation where you're in this like extra small like you're on a mobile, but you're doing this thing that someone meant for desktop, we wanna just we wanna help you. We wanna we're gonna shrink that. All right, thanks. Cool. What happens when the image is bigger than what you're trying to do? So that was the uh, situation before. So what we're going to do is... Uh, uh, can scale that to uh, 600? Yeah, let's do that. What do you want here? Which, which numbers do you want? Uh, the the new class to 6 and not 12. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's do that. That's probably not going to be, yeah, that's a different dog. Um, let's see, yeah, see, so he's like, this is so developer tools, uh, Chrome developer tools, very, very useful if you are a technical guy like me. Um, but the row is that big, that is that big. So, and we could also, I don't know, if, I don't know how helpful this is, but you can do it twice and, okay, and then I think we have to make this big enough. And just like will. If I just set with 100% on the image, will it to some definition of a column thing? Um, the thing is that image responsive will give you that 100% width. Yeah. So that's that's part of the definition. But it's not. Max width, 100%? Uh, but it's not. Yeah, yeah. Width of it. It's in six columns. Yes. Yeah, so oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I, I messed this up. Sorry. That, I was wondering what happened there. That's my bad. But those should be set aside. Hopefully, I trust the one that Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. That was a misfire on the HTML. Sweet. We're going through all the concepts I want. Concept I want. This, is, uh, this is great. Um, other questions? Okay. Sweet. Um, I just want to make sure we talk about some stuff. You're going to want some of this stuff in your own websites. Um, so can I get into that? And then we'll go into the exercises, and the exercise should kind of get you at your <coughs> computer doing these things that I've been doing. Um, so, okay, uh, I think we learned all about that. Um, you can skip columns. So sometimes you want to have a column, you want to have nothing, then you want to have another column. You use offset. Now, the nothing doesn't show up here. Like, you can do the nothing by just making a blank column. It's kind of not best practices, but it doesn't really matter. But in case you really did care about not best practices, what you do is you have a column and then you add the offset, call MD offset four. What that says is, Assume there's a column before me of width of width four. Width. Yeah. So just a way to do that. Um, I think I had an example here. And OK, yep, I did. Um, I should just use puppies for all these because it would have been way more easy. Um, so this is the skipping columns with offset. Uh, we're going to open up the source. We're going to make it big. And this is, this is the HTML. We have four columns, four columns, four columns. We have four columns, four columns. And you'll see that if we actually look at the code here, okay, four columns, four columns, four columns, and there's that gap in the center. And that gap is because we define call MD offset four. Now you can always say, well, you could do six, you could do two, you could do three. It just really depends on what looks good. Um, so this is the way that 
Um, for example, you can have your blog, and you can have, and I think I, this is one of the exercises, but you can have like a, a, your article, and then you have some white space for one column, and then you can have a sidebar. And so this is how you would achieve that. You would give the sidebar a call and the offset one. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, you can nest. I mentioned this before. Rows can contain rows. Um, you will see if you nest far enough, eventually the strap gets very confused and basically everything stacks, but that's pretty much what I would expect based on how the strap works. Yeah, go ahead. So you would have a row contain another row? Yeah. Is it you inside of a column that's in a row? Yeah. yeah. Can you yeah. draw a picture row. of that? Yeah, yeah. Do um, you have one maybe? Uh, that's the next slide. not draw a picture of that. whiteboard and I have some And, and I know, I, and I, and I, and I can yeah, cover yeah. that later. I'm going uh -huh. to hold you out because yeah, yeah. That was a good once question. we get through the lecture, yeah. then we can all ask questions. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, it, like I said, kind of at the, the start of the class, there's one big concept of Bootstrap. It's a grid system. I think if we're spending all our time on the grid system, then that is like, that's my, like, I think uh, productive and happy outcome, pretty much. Um, like, like I said, there's a lot of Bootstrap stuff, and I'll be talking about the Bootstrap stuff, stuff later. Um, the stuff is basically just stuff. You you don't have to understand many things. It's just this is the you add and everything's good. Okay, done. Okay, so he's going to draw a picture yes, of a row that contains another row. Yeah. So Cody's going to be doing a row that contains another row. Um, if you see just the the HTML, you've got the container, you've got the row, you've got a column, you've got another column, you've got the row that has been defined inside the column. So the picture that that looks like actually on the page is happening. So let's say we have this row here. Okay. And then we're going to take, we're going to put a column that's six feet <laughs> wide inside of this row. Okay. So I mean, that's about half of the proportions. Okay. So then when you take another row and stick it inside of this column, okay. basically you're going to take up this space here. And then you can divide this into 12 right. columns. That again. makes sense. Yeah. I was just confused about so, a row containing another row to rock. Yeah. But it has to be within a column yep. that's yep. in a row. Yeah. 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 And, uh, if you put a row within a row with, like, without a column, it would be pointless, basically. Yeah. And if you ever do it, like, if you ever do something 12 wide, you can do the classes, but it's more you just do the row instead of doing the actual column mid 12. Or... Okay. Okay. Cool. Well, good stuff. Um, okay. Um, I have something that is actually about varying columns of viewport width, but I'm pretty sure we covered a little bit of that. Um, oh, yeah, well, no, this is actually where you define. So, uh, so this is a tangent. So, we've got uh, columns where uh, we've been doing giving things. You're on MD, you're six. And that's just it's a lazy way. It's probably the way that's going to work for most of your, your websites when you start off. You really want different behavior on mobile. What you can do is define different column behavior based on the size of the viewport. So this is where the benefit of all these MDs, excesses, et cetera, comes in. You get to say, hey, this column in a MD display, a viewport, you're 10. Otherwise, you're a 6. So you can imagine worlds where this helps you. Um, I'm just trying to make sure we see kind of the concepts. Um, we've got these columns. This is a 10. Uh, uh, this is a 10 for MD viewports and a 6 for SM viewports and a 2 for uh, MD viewports and a 6 for SM viewports. So I did this with, uh, I think we're going to go back to the dog. Um, I think he's going to help us out um, to make this more obvious and real. Um, so this is the example from before. Um, and let's, okay, your dog and... Uh, I have to close up your tag actually also. Okay. Live code. Okay. Da, 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 da. Now, are you saying that you can make it conditional and say if it's the viewport is medium, do this? Yeah. Yep. I'm not understanding exactly how this is doing. It's so, doing okay. So, if I know my bootstrap correctly. Or how correctly. you're specifying that, I guess. Yeah, so this is, this is why you, you have all of this. The ability for you to do this. Um, I think Cody might be able to speak to the like practical uh, reasons why you might do this. Um, I think that uh, building responsive websites is still a 
uh, thing I do not have much yeah. experience with. Yeah. I'll show them the problems that exist on Playstone. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think we destroyed Playstone. Let's do. Let's see. Cats are better. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Um, okay, cool. Uh, yeah. Sweet. Okay, cool. So, just to. What we were doing here is we said, okay, these are the two things we've got. One is 6-6, six, six, the other is 6-6, six, six, but on small. So, less than uh, our 9, whatever it was. Um, it's going to be 10 to 2. So as we resize, one of these kittens is going to get way bigger than the other kitten. Um, but but uh -huh. were you, can you show an example of where you're applying the conditional, um, this image, if it's medium, do this. If it's small, do this. Or is, is am I misunderstanding? This, this, is, this is that. There is another concept okay. later that we're talking about that is more explicitly okay. that. Okay. But this is essentially saying in SM, it's one width. In other ones, it's not. Okay. There, we have visibility hidden. Later. Okay. Um, so that's. I'm just not understanding yeah, after no. looking at the code because it looks like yeah. you've got two different sets of devs. <laughs> I don't understand. So yeah. that's the. Is that's some, is some JavaScript or something going in there and rewriting? This is, this is all okay. just media queries. It's, it's, okay, yeah, it's just media queries. So right. notice we went down to an SM and we've got this is a 2 and this is a 10. But when it was bigger, it's bigger. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, now they're the same size. So. So we're on the MD, so 6666, six, six, six. we go down to the SM, and 66, six, they stack, 10, 2. So, um, it's okay. something that kind of like maybe, maybe you can't wrap your head around it right now, but you just have yeah. to kind of accept it. That okay. That's how it works. I'll, I'll, I'll look at it with you later. Yeah. There's, a, there's a, a, a lot that I still have to learn about responsive web design, yeah, and uh, uh, anywho. So responsive images, that's, we've already learned about responsive images. So, um, okay. Um, so that's pretty much the bootstrap grid system. Um, I think it'd be valuable if we go to the exercises so people kind of have a chance to play with this themselves. Um, there's the, uh, in the zip file, we have the exercises. Um, and there is a um, exercises-grid.html. Um, like I said, um, Really, I think that if there's a thing to learn out of this class, it's going to be the grid system. Um, the documentation is great for the components. Uh, I mean, I, I say that because we're coming up on, uh, we're going a little, little slower maybe than uh, I thought when I was putting the slides together, but that's totally okay. Um, I think it's important for everyone to kind of get their teeth into the grid system and kind of dive right in and uh, raise your hand if you need help. <laughs> okay. I think we've been. Uh, I've seen a lot of people gotten through uh, at least the first, uh, the first two or three uh, grid exercises. I kind of want to go back and just kind of whirlwind tour through the rest. Obviously, we have 15 minutes left in the class, and so we were a little ambitious with regards to what was going to be in it. Um, that said, I, I heard a lot of really good questions today, and I, I got, I got to see the. I, I felt like I saw some of the learning, and so um, I hope that you've gotten something out of the grid system. Like I said, bootstrap grid system. That's the one thing. Like, if you came away from the class with one technical thing, the Bootstrap grid system is the thing that I want you to take away from it. And because Bootstrap, like, CSS, HTML is hard. And it's hard to get things where you want them to go. The grid system is the way to get things to where you want them to go. So that's kind of the, the, the start of your journey into the world of websites. Um, I'm going to blast and I can show them an example. With it? Blast with this and I'll show them an example. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the, so, Anyway, you have the slides. They're on the Facebook page for the invite. Um, they're going to be on the Let's Go Blacksburg website, so you'll be able to see all the stuff that I'm not going to be able to talk about. Um, the world, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, we talked about kind of conditionals. There are actually classes that specifically do the conditionals, whether or not it's visible or not, based on the viewport width. Um, so obviously, I'm not going to be talking too much about that. Um, we have exercises for that as well. Uh, I will put in the exercise, the solutions, the exercises online. Um, there are a bunch of components. Um, really, rather than kind of go through all the HTML, I'm going to go through our, uh, our demo page. Um, and so these are just the possible things that Bootstrap gives you. You have the grid system. It gives you a bunch of components kind of out of the box. Um, this is called the carousel. It's for displaying multiple images. 
Um, the carousel is actually a pain to set up, so uh, maybe that's not the first thing we want to dive into. Um, yeah. <laughs> these do require JavaScript. Someone asked earlier uh, about yeah. JavaScript. You have to have JavaScript on the page for these kind of like click response for it to work. And you've got to make sure you have jQuery too. Yeah, yeah. It, well, I will complain if you don't have a jQuery. Um, the Jumbotron is uh, one thing, this is like one of the, whenever I see a page, this is a very distinctive bootstrap thing. This is the Jumbotron. Um, and then, so through the magic of the use source, I'm going to show you that this is not actually, that you've actually learned some stuff yeah, that, really that helps. Um, so you're looking at this, that's a Jumbotron. That's just, so I've just told you about this like mysterious magical thing. Anyway, that's a Jumbotron. But if you look here, you see these, these guys. These guys are just columns. These are columns with four. You were just doing all of this. So this is one thing that it gives you, which is the Jumbotron. You give a class Jumbotron, hello world, you put some stuff in there, etc. But then the rest is just stuff that you've already seen, these, these uh, bootstrap uh, columns and uh, headers. So um, there's a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I'm not going to go into the world of JavaScript, um, but you can, if you're building a web app and not just a website, um, they have a lot of nice interaction. They've got buttons, they've got tables, they've got modals, like dialogues that pop out of the page for your interaction with anyhow. Um, so kind of, we're not going to get into that world. Um, I think that's fine. We spend a lot of time on the grid system and that makes me happy. Um, Cody's going to talk kind of briefly. Uh, he's going to walk us through a website that he's actually built, um, actually using Bootstrap. Um, and he's going to talk a little bit about like what he's taken from Bootstrap and what he has not taken from Bootstrap. So um, let me make sure that we are open for you. There we go. Yeah. So, uh, if you want to get full screen. Yeah. Uh, yep. When you guys, when you guys are looking at this page, what do you see that reminds you of Bootstrap right now? The nav bar. Yeah, the nav bar. What about this area up here? Grid. Yes, it's grid. So this is a uh, column mid four. This is a. Uh, Sorry, I just recoded this a couple of days ago. It's a column mid seven, no, mid six, something like that. This is a column mid two or something. But I mean, I guess the easiest way to answer these questions are to look at the source. Oh man, yeah. It's like yeah. how everyone gets started as a HTML like hacker. Look at all those yeah. JavaScript files. <laughs> and let's pretend that I do not override styles in the. Sometimes you got to do that. So you got your mid five, you got your mid four. So that mid four was your top left. You got your mid five was your middle. Yep. Then your mid three, which is the other stuff. Yeah, I couldn't remember. It. <coughs> yeah. We were working on a different design, and they're like, "But the logo has to be in the header." And I'm like, "Yeah, oh, come on, guys." So I mean, <laughs> well, it's a very pretty logo. What, what, what are we gonna do? Yeah, so these are these are things we didn't see in Bootstrap. These are yeah, just drop downs. Bootstrap, all Bootstrap there. <laughs> um, another thing we didn't go over: these glyph icons, which are supposed to be a house and a uh, user yeah. type icon. That's all Bootstrap too. Yeah, the glyph icons. You'll if you go onto the Bootstrap page, and I think it's under CSS. It's under yeah, it's CSS really, or components. It's like one of the first. It's things. under uh, components. Yeah, I yeah. Believe. And I mean, it's really easy to do. It's just two classes that you put on a span, and automatically you have like. Stuff right. like this you can play around with. Is this. that using like font awesome or something? Yeah, it's using yeah. font. Yeah, so you can resize that using font size. Yeah, as opposed to it just being this like image that has a static and fixed. Uh, and we're gonna image. reduce this footer image because I look really bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's going right there, guys. Oh, right there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're like one of the only people in a white shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So apparently, what happened was I didn't have to have my jacket at the time, and I'm the only guy in the house that's too big to fit everybody else's jacket tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, you just couldn't just put one in front of you. And, and, and uh, another interesting thing here is that we've went in and we've got our own fonts to use, so Bootstrap does come with pretty good fonts, but you'll find that, you'll find those fonts pretty much everywhere on the internet, mm -hmm. so we went and found two fonts that seem to complement each other, or I went and found them. With the, um, I believe this is the franchise font, and this is the mm -hmm. dense font. Yeah. Maybe the other way around. So. <coughs> questions? I like questions. So. Well, this is great, Cody. I, I, I really like that you called out like the stuff that we, we talked like. Yeah, and I, oh, you yeah. probably cannot tell it, but there's also a container in the middle. Yeah. If you, um, yeah, where are we going? Actually, let's go to, um, 
Oh, slash blog. Okay. Yeah. So, I've, I've, I've got to I've got to figure out how to un. F11. Okay. Escape. F11. Yes, we made. It. So go to slash blog. Yes. Oh yeah, look at those. <laughs> those, so. those look very familiar. <laughs> And um, another thing that Bootstrap has we didn't cover is they have uh, different button styles that can easily be plugged into your pages. Um, I think this utilizes. Go to the source. Yeah, let's do it. What are you doing there, computer? Wow, what are you doing? Really hard to read. Linux, guys, Linux. Um, <laughs> he's thinking. What's up? Um, on your web page, is all the content within Bootstrap? Elements or are there other HTML elements and how they uh, there's there's um, so basically HTML is the code that tells you what's on the page. So then bootstrap and CSS tells that code how it should look like, right? Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of custom CSS that I did just to space things the way that I wanted them, to change the font, mm -hmm. to change the color and stuff like that. So what if you add a container yep. afterwards it's not a bootstrap container, how would it flow in on the page? So my container is a bootstrap container. I would never not use a bootstrap container because that's the entire point of using bootstrap is to have that ability. <laughs> okay. So what if you just want to wrap Sometimes what will happen is you'll give it you'll make a container and you'll say, hey, I want some top padding because yeah. it's too high up on the page. Yeah, so you'll, so you'll define, or you want to style an image yeah. or something so you slap yeah. a div around. Yeah, so what happens? Yeah. Most of the extra stuff I've done have been the margins, which is how it's, you know, like how you displace one div element from another or something like that. Or the padding, which is the area around an image in a, a div or stuff like that. So that's mainly what you change. So it looks like you have a, oh, you did, you did it. You did use a SM6 uh, uh, MD4. So on MD, it's 3x3. Three three. On SM, it's 2x2. Uh, two two. And I may have just been lazy and didn't finish that. Either. Yeah. So it doesn't. Um, so, yeah, block, yeah so, another issue know, that I, I wanted to show you firsthand on my website, mm -hmm. um, go back to the page yeah. and start downsizing it. You're going to notice that it doesn't scale right now, but it does stack. So, I mean, <coughs> when, you, when you have a mobile website, you want your content that you need to be in front of the user to be right in front of the user. And so, Basically, there's a lot here that I still have to do mm -hmm. in order to get the site where I want it to be. Um, mm -hmm. If you go up to the top, okay. is that as far as it goes? So maybe I would get rid of the logo and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, I, I just and also, scrolling is a lot easier on the mobile device versus uh, yeah. a uh, desktop device. So, I mean, there's different options. And like also, like this area right here, the entire intent. Oh, sorry, walking through. Yeah. Yeah. But the entire intention of this is like, have it to where people can over, like over, you know, mouse over it, and then it'll do like a blue highlight beside it, and then they can click on it and go to a page. But if you're on a mobile device, guess what? You don't have that ability right. to scroll over something, that right. ability to click yeah. mouse over top of something. So you can just take that and get rid of it on a mobile device. Yeah. Oh, so when it gets small, you just assume it's a mobile device. Yeah. yeah. That's the assumption because I don't think I would have anybody yeah. sitting there taking their web browser, taking up this much of their right. screen, even though Microsoft oh, yeah. and was Windows 8 is trying to go that way, it's like it's like like you still need that functionality. So you, you've got to make an assumption that they are using a mobile device whenever the screen size is below a certain amount, which generally they are going to be. So. How do you deal with the mobile device being in mm portrait -hmm. mode? Because I mean, the width then is, I'm assuming, less than 768, <clears throat> right? Portrait mode. Portraits, so yeah, Paul. Yeah, so basically it'll just take those divs and make them, it'll make it fit the screen. Uh huh. So it'll take those columns and stack them to where they fit the screen. What I mean is, um, does, does, does Bootstrap have a media query size for a width that would they be? They have an extra small adult in. Extra, What's extra small, small again? About, about, yeah, it is mobile, yeah. Oh, it is? Oh, okay, good. Yeah, so I think that handles like maybe a little bit smaller than 760. I've got another question. Um, okay. How do you do the, like when you do the scaling, um, are there any issues getting using JavaScript elements to mesh with that? <coughs> like if you're scaling an image, or is that just something you try to avoid doing? Or? So when you scale an image, you do it in CSS generally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
So you try to avoid JavaScript when possible. Sweet. Maybe like if you're doing the points over top, like you have the other page, you know, you were needed with the banner and you had to do the scroll <coughs> points. Those are the terms. Why don't we, uh, I think we should, uh, actually, let's talk, let's talk. Okay. Yeah, after I actually got a demo of that on okay. the website that I can pull up uh, okay. after the fact. <coughs> yeah, if I see what you're talking about, I'll probably be able to answer your question. I want to just finish off, and the thing that I want to finish off is just that there are a lot of bootstrap resources out here. We think this is like one element of you learning website development and bootstrap. There are people who have bootstrap themes online. You can pay for them. You can not pay for them. Um, the... Uh, we did not have time for free space, unfortunately. Um, I think we got a lot of kind of good hands-on stuff, but there are also tutorials people heard online, and I found this like 15-part series on YouTube um, where they go through a lot of the same stuff that we talked about here, just in a little more detail. Um, and I encourage you to seek these things out um, if this has interested you at all. Thank you very much for coming, and uh, I certainly don't want to take up all of your evening, but uh, I'm really excited kind of about the turnout and by all the questions, all the learners. Yeah, we'll, we'll be we'll be here for a little bit longer and. Uh, just uh, uh, we, we, we thank you again for coming.